Hey everybody, it's Steve Jenkins, and today I'm going to walk you through replacing a recirculating pump on a standard residential water heater. Now, a recirculating pump uh, basically creates a loop of hot water around all the hot fixtures in your house. That means when you turn the shower on or turn the hot water tap on, uh, your hot water is there right away. And the manufacturer of these kind of pumps, they claim you can save between 15 and 17,000 gallons a year by using one of these because you're not sitting there and letting the water go down the drain while you're waiting for it to get hot. So basically, uh, it pulls water in from uh, this line that loops and connects to all the fixtures. Uh, this pump draws that in, shoves it back into the bottom of your water heater, and then uh, your water heater heats it and sends it back out the top when hot water is on demand. So it's uh, always creating a cycle of hot water through your house. Now, I knew something was wrong with ours because it was taking a longer time than normal for the hot water to get hot in the shower. And uh, so I came down to investigate and uh, sometimes you might hear a weird noise and if that's the case, if you get it soon enough, you can just replace the, part, the cartridge in this pump. This is a Taiko 007 BF5. And the neat thing about those is you can just pull these, uh, these screws here and uh, replace the cartridge inside. However, if you wait too long and you don't catch it in time, um, this is what'll happen. And you'll get black soot on the outside of, uh, of your pump because it burned up. And in that case, you don't need a new cartridge. You need a whole new pump. So I called the nice folks at Taco, and uh, the bad news is they don't make this anymore. However, the good news is they make one almost exactly like it. It's no longer bronze. Uh, it's the same part number, but SF instead of BF, meaning stainless finish instead of bronze finish. So um, I'm going to get this uh, all ready to replace. In fact, I already have. I've done five things. One, shut off that valve because I don't want the water draining back from all the fixtures out here. Two, I've turned my gas to pilot. That way I don't uh, start up the burner on my water heater uh, when it's empty, which is a really bad thing. Number three, I've shut off the uh, cold water coming in because I don't want the tank refilling after I've drained it. And number four, I've drained the tank um, so that it's now empty. Uh, you could drain it with a standard garden hose. I cheat and use one of these little Simer pumps. It uh, empties this tank in you know 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, number five, and probably the first thing you do when you realize you had something wrong, uh, unplug the pump. Now realize this pump could be hot, uh, the water in here is definitely going to be hot, so allow uh, some time for everything to cool off before you get going. So I've got everything ready here for us to remove the old pump, done those five things, and uh, so let's go unbox the pump, and then we'll uh, come back in here, yank out the old one, and put the new one in and test it out. So here is our new Taiko pump. It's the 007 SF5, so almost the same number as the BF5, which they don't make anymore. The S just stands for stainless, as it says right there on the label. Opening up the box, pretty simple. You've got the new pump. All right, looks pretty much like the other one, but the housing and the motor housing and everything is green, and the fitting here is stainless steel. We got a couple O-rings. Those will come in handy. And we got instructions, and those never come in handy. So let's uh, go back to the, oh, I forgot. I'm gonna install this at the same time. It's a timer, uh, because this pump doesn't have a timer on it. You can buy pumps that come with timers integrated. I'd rather have the system separate, so if the timer goes bad, I don't have to replace the whole pump and vice versa. So these are really cheap on Amazon. I also got a pretty good deal on the pump on Amazon. I'll put the links in the video. Um, so when we're done uh, installing this, I'm also going to install and program this uh, timer so that we're only circulating hot water when there's a good chance that we'll need it and we'll save some electricity from the pump and we'll also save some heat loss uh, from not circulating water through the house and no one's going to use it. So I have uh, loosened the bolts and nuts holding this in place. They were held in place with um, 11 16 nuts but 5 8 head bolts. And I hate it when people do that. but. Oh well, uh, luckily I had the tools to do it. So just a wrench and a socket, got these out. These actually weren't torqued down that uh, that tightly, so I'm gonna follow that same lead and not torque them down too tightly when I put them back in. You know, you always wanna torque down things just tight enough when you're plumbing, but uh, 
don't overdo it. So a little bit of water was left inside and uh, dribbled out, which is why you always have a towel down. So um, we're going to take this back to my uh, table and uh, we're going to have to wire in this same uh, plug because the new pump didn't come with a, uh, a pigtail. So we'll wire that back in. We'll bring the new pump in and we'll uh, hook it back up. So here we have the old Taiko 007 BF5 next to the new Taiko 007 SF5. As you can tell, they are pretty much identical except for the stainless versus the bronze. The O-rings uh, that I removed from the original, uh, boy, they're in pretty good shape. I'm not going to reuse them because new ones came with it. And if you've got new O-rings, uh, you should use them. But in a pinch, if I had to reuse these O-rings, I probably would. They're still uh, really soft. They didn't tear at all when I took them out. And uh, they're in pretty good shape. I'm still going to put some... Uh, food safe silicone uh, lubricant on the new o-rings i just like to do that uh, i'm working with shower fixtures or anything rubber um, it's just never a bad idea uh, but based on the condition of the old ones i think they're going to be fine so i'm going to uh, disconnect this pigtail and uh, rewire it up in here and then let's get back into the uh, utility room and hook it up so i've got the uh, little covers off the electrical connections of both uh, I just needed a little flathead screw to pull off the old one. The new one, I could have used a flathead or a Phillips head, so I just used the flathead. And all I need to do now is match up uh, the same wires from this pigtail to the same colored wires uh, over here. So obviously this one goes to the white, and this one goes to the green, which is the ground. And then one uh, wires in, let's see, white green that. and yellow there we go so let's look over here i've got white i've got yellow um i don't have a green but that's okay because what that means is i'll probably just wire the green to this little green screw for ground so green is uh, always ground when you're dealing with electrical stuff uh, this is one of those rare circumstances where you're combining electrical and plumbing, but uh, that's what we're going to do. So we'll just match up all the colors uh, with the old pigtail, and we should be good. So I've got the uh, new pump wired up with the old pigtail. Uh, so put the same one to the white, same one to the yellow, and uh, then put the ground on the ground screw here. They actually had it wired, the ground screw, to uh, this little retaining bracket. I believe this is just a little retaining bracket uh, that holds this little, I can't tell, is that a capacitor, um, in place there. So maybe that's why this thing fry. I, I don't know if it, uh, if the uh, wiring was bad, but this is a wiring up we don't need. So I took the one that's all slitted up and, and ugly. Um, so I just wired this up, with the uh, two wires into the ground. I uh, cannibalized this uh, mounting hardware for the wiring and uh, I pulled this out a little bit so I wasn't crimping in the right spot and got a new crimp on it because everyone knows uh, crimping ain't easy. And uh, so we should be good to go. Um, I'm going to put this lid back on and then we'll uh, lube up those o-rings. I'll take them over to the utility room and uh, let's get this thing in. So we've got the new pump uh, right here and it should theoretically just slip right into place, which it does. Now, uh, obviously we took one out so we know which way it should go, but just in case you forgot, there's gonna always be a little arrow to show you the flow of, uh, of water. So obviously it's gonna come in, get pumped, and back into the tank. So this is how we wanna do it. So I'm gonna grab the hardware here, mount this in place, and let's give it a shot. Okay, so uh, using our 5 8 wrench, I've uh, torqued these down. Um, Again, I wanted to, I could have done it with a socket, but I did it by hand, uh, except this one I couldn't have done with a socket. That's one of the great things about uh, trying to work in plumbing spaces. Sometimes you gotta just use what will fit. So I uh, wanted to just get these just snug. I wanted to be able to uh, finish them by hand so I'd know how snug they are. And uh, it really wasn't that much trouble. Just do them one at a time and uh, make sure it seats evenly all the way across. So I think I've got a pretty nice and uh, tight enough seal in there with these flanges. So. I guess we're about to find out. So uh, we don't want to plug this in right away. You don't want to run these kind of pumps dry. So we're going to reverse uh, the order, um, starting with filling the tank. So we want to uh, close this valve, which I've done. Uh, we don't want to turn this on until we've got water in the tank. But uh, the first thing we want to do is close that. It's OK to open this so we can open that valve. And then uh, we're going to go up and let's do that now. Let's. Uh, 
start the water flowing back into the tank. Looking for any leaks? There shouldn't be. Even if our pump was leaking, uh, we really actually shouldn't know about it yet because there is this uh, check valve here, which I didn't mention, but uh, I didn't want to trust it. I don't trust that this was going to stop all the water from flowing out. So it may have been possible to do this uh, swap out without draining the tank, but I didn't want to risk it. So I'm going to let the tank fill up. Uh, and while I do, I'm going to open that valve over there. And then uh, once we've tested that everything's working, the last thing we'll do is uh, turn this back on. Now, don't forget to go and close the um, hot water faucet that you open to help uh, create an air gap. Um, however, it's going to sputter and spurt. So let it get that over with and let it uh, run You know, the hot water side. It won't be hot, but uh, just let it run water. And then warn everybody in the house that when they use the hot water for the first time, it's going to sputter and spurt a little bit, but it'll go back to normal. So I'm going to go uh, make sure that's all good. We're going to let this fill up and then we'll uh, test our pump. Okay, so the tank is done filling. It's not making noise anymore. Uh, I've reopened this valve that brings the water back in from all the uh, hot fixtures. Uh, obviously, this is closed. It's not leaking. And uh, this is still on pilot because I don't want to warm anything. And uh, in a massive sign of optimism, I have removed all the drain uh, hoses, hoping this works. Um, although I have left the towel there, so uh, just in case it does leak, we'll know. So here's our plug. Let's uh, see how it goes. Well, that's a nice sound. Sounds like it's running. Feels like it's running. And uh, I can feel water and I can hear, why is it, that there was some air in there so I can hear it getting quieter now as I think uh, it was throwing air through there and now it's throwing water and that's not that loud. Uh, and no one sleeps near here and this is in a closet so we probably won't hear anything. Uh, I'd say we're probably pretty good to go. So I'm going to turn this back to on and as soon as I do, it starts burning. I'll turn it back up here where we like it. And uh, I think we're looking in pretty good shape. Although I did have two upgrades I want to do. Uh, the first is, and in fact I'm going to unplug it for this. Oh, obviously I can fix that out. I'm going to use this instead. Now this pump did a pretty good job. It ran uh, non-stop uh, for, let's see, this house was built in 97 and 98. Uh, it's now 2014, so this thing's been going for, uh, it's almost 2014, uh, a few more weeks. So let's see, that's 14, 15, 16, 17 years, 24-7, uh, which isn't that bad. But you don't really need hot water all the time. So I've set this so that, uh, it will circulate hot water between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., which is really when uh, the people who get their hot water from this tank are gonna be using it. And uh, so now I can plug this in here instead, and it won't run 24 seven. It'll only run uh, in between those hours. So we'll actually save a little bit of electricity. We'll save some energy because we won't get heat loss. And speaking of heat loss, I also picked up at the hardware store uh, some of this insulating tape. So I'm going to wrap this around uh, just that little piece there. Again, it's not that much. It may, might not make that big of a difference, but over 17 years, it might make some difference, and uh, that's all it takes. So anyway, we have successfully uh, replaced a recirculating pump on a residential water heater. Um, please go ahead and uh, leave your questions or comments down below, and uh, look forward to making more of these videos for you. Have a good one. Bonus video! So, you remember earlier on in the video when I was unboxing the pump and I uh, jokingly threw away the instructions trying to be funny? Yeah, it turns out that's probably not the right thing to do because before I uh, finalized this video and uploaded it, I decided to read through them just to make sure I hadn't missed anything. And I had. I'd made a, a mistake that I keep making and I keep having to remind myself. I assumed that because uh, the original pump had been installed here by a professional plumber working for a professional builder who built this house in a you know pretty nice neighborhood. I assumed, and you know what that means, uh, that he'd installed it properly. I guess I should say he or she. I guess there are female plumbers. 
Um, but she probably wouldn't have done it wrongfully. So uh, this needs to be on top, the control box here. Uh, the instructions clearly said, make sure this is on top. It cannot be on the bottom. Uh, at, or it said you, it cannot be at the six o'clock position as you look at the pump from the rear. And, and that's how it was. So uh, I took a chance and I decided to trust this valve and just close uh, that return valve. So there was only the water in this line between this check valve and that valve. And just unscrewed these little Allen head uh, screws and got a very, very little amount of water out. And I had a towel underneath it. It just burst a little bit of water, maybe two or three tablespoons. And, uh, and I was able to remove this and flip it upside down and put it back on without draining the tank. So that's good to know for future reference when I do want to replace the cartridge in this, assuming I can catch it before it burns up in another 17 years, um, it is possible to just undo this and flip it over. Um, I learned something else uh, while reading the instructions, that there is no wrong way to wire this up. You don't have to have uh, the white wire or the yellow wire go to either side of the electrical connection. Uh, the pump is smart enough to never run backwards. It will not operate in reverse, so it doesn't matter how it's wired up. So um, you, as long as you hear it running, you know it is going to be running in the direction of the arrow. Um, and I guess this bonus video lets you see the uh, little bit of insulation that I put there on uh, the return line. And I also decided since I had some left over, I may as well go ahead and insulate the uh, the hot pipe headed out to the uh, if and it's warm now. So I've tested it, everything's working great. Um, this is now sucking the water out back into the uh, tank and we're now, now able to get really hot water really quickly, really far away from the tank. So uh, next time, you know, maybe read the instructions instead of tossing away and trying to be funny for a YouTube video. Um, until then, uh, you can do it yourself.